How are you guys doing today? Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege, coming to you live today on Tuesday, October 8th, now officially through five weeks of the NFL season. And with that, we got some more games to recap today, but of course, we're going to talk about the biggest news of the day, the New York Jets firing head coach Robert Sala after the first five weeks. Completely unexpected, so we're going to go into discussing it and analyzing it and giving you guys my thoughts on it as well. We're going to talk about the game last night between the Saints and the Kansas City Chiefs, as well as going over some of the other games as well, like the Cardinals, the Browns, and the, the Jets as well to, to cap it off. So make sure to stick around for that. And before we get started, I'd like to remind you guys, if you guys have any questions or comments or any opinions you'd like to share, please don't hesitate to use it and share it with me during today's show. If you want to make it absolutely sure that your message stands out and gets featured on today's show, there's an easy way to go about that. Just use the new Super Chat feature that you see on your screen and that we have available to you guys just by clicking the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box to send in your Super Chat. This way, it guarantees that your message gets on the air and it's also a fantastic way to support our channel. We rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content you love, and we appreciate every bit of it. So again, get involved with the show, send in a question, make a comment or anything like that, and use the new Super Chat feature to make make it sure that it's absolutely guaranteed that I see it, I read it out loud, and we make it more conversational, more interactive. It's a lot more exciting, and we always value your guys' interactions each and every time. So make sure to do that. Use the Super Chat button and get involved with the show. But with that being the case now, we're going to start off with last night's game. First off, before we get into the Jets news, because I need a whole segment to talk about that. So we're going to start off with the Kansas City Chiefs. A big win last night for the Chiefs, despite all their injuries, despite missing Pacheco, Rishi Rice now, and the latest news on him. Uh, Obviously, Hollywood Brown not being there as well. And the Chiefs did enough to get the job done, right? Um, They kept pace with the Minnesota Vikings after last night's win to remain perfect over the New Orleans Saints, both now the Vikings and the Chiefs still remain the only undefeated teams. The Chiefs won last night's game 26-13 to go 2-5-0, while the Saints dropped their third game in a row and now are 2-3 on the season. Um, This time around, the Saints put in their second lowest point total of the season, 13 points uh, against the Chiefs, obviously just one point above their lowest of the season against the Philadelphia Eagles a couple weeks ago where they also lost that game that time at home. And looking at the performances out of this game, you know, you're thinking who's going to step up for, you know, Hollywood Brown, Rishi Rice, and uh, Pacheco, right? Who's going to step up for the Chiefs outside of just Travis Kelsey, right? None other than a blast from the past, two former Chiefs coming back to rejoin the squad and having great games on the night. Kareem Hunt on your left and Juju Smith-Schuster on your right. And uh, just looking at these two guys, right, Kareem Hunt, 27 carries for 102 yards and he scored a touchdown. Then Juju Smith-Schuster, right, 7 receptions, 130 yards, tacked on to Travis Kelsey's 9 receptions and 70 yards as well. And uh, Mahomes, you know, he did his thing, 28 for 39 for 331 yards. No touchdowns, but one interception in the game. And um, it was, from the number standpoint, you're looking at 102, 130. Mahomes threw for over 330. You're thinking that, like, this was a great game for the Kansas City Chiefs offense. But they did struggle a little bit um, in the red zone. I'm pretty sure they were 2 for 7 or something like that. So, obviously, room to improve there, but still... Getting performances like Kareem Hunt's, like Juju Smith-Schuster's, is uh, an amazing sign to see, obviously. So that's great to see from those two guys. Like I mentioned, Travis Kelsey having back-to-back games now that he's recorded 7-plus receptions and 70-plus yards. Last week, he did it against the Chargers. Now he continues it this week. And uh, on the other side, you know, the Saints, only 13 points. They really struggled, like uh, like we said on, on the preview, where we said that the injuries to the offensive line were really going to make it tough for them to kind of make it so multidimensional that the Chiefs have a hard time trying to stop the run, trying to stop the pass. And uh, it became a 
troubling thing because Derek Carr finished 18 of 28 for only 185 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. He left that game with an oblique injury. He did not return, obviously. And on that running game, right, you look at Alvin Kamara and his output, he recorded 11 carries for 26 yards, which was the lowest so far of the year for him. Rahid Shahid had a nice game, four receptions for 86 yards and that 43-yard touchdown, which was great to see at that point in time where it got them closer. But again, we're talking about a marathon, so to speak, right? Not just the one play where you get close. You got to make this a whole, a whole series of things throughout the game that uh, you can build on and keep pace with the Chiefs. And I just felt like the, the offensive line issues were going to make it extremely hard for the, the Saints to go ahead and do that. And then you also look at Chris Olave, right? Two receptions for 10 yards. Again, his worst performance of the year. And, you know, in a sense, the uh, the Chiefs, because their defense is pretty good as it is, they don't really have to over-focus on maybe the running game. They could focus on taking away Chris Olave because the running game they might not feel as worried about because the offensive line's banged up. They don't feel like they could necessarily out muscle them or just you know out maneuver them just one-on-one so you got more guys allocated to try and take away Chris Olave and then from that point on you're chasing the game now so Kamara's not really running the ball and then it just gets all out of sorts right and looking at the game a little bit closer and the actions that transpired in this game it was a bad start for the Saints honestly um much like Joe Burrow mentioned I think it was a, a great quote that he said when he said um that he had to be perfect, near perfect, to uh, defeat the Baltimore Ravens. And he basically was. And he got as close as you can get to beating them. And I feel like that goes the same for anybody that's going into Arrowhead trying to beat the Chiefs. And you can't have a start like this. Um, Derek Carr, on the first possession of, of the game, he gets pressured. He tries to throw it out of bounds. Of course, he doesn't mean to throw the interception. But, you know, it was very, it was a very weird throw very high throw and uh it obviously didn't have the weight to carry fully out of bounds and they throw an interception right then and there and uh the Chiefs score right after that the drive right after that their first drive of the game Kareem Hunt scores a touchdown and now they're down seven nothing with getting the ball first so now you're chasing the game already and after a few punts and Kansas City kicks a couple field goals the Saint the Saints showed that resilience, like I said, where Rashid Shahid scored that touchdown to make it 10-7. So now, after a bad start, you're thinking, all right, we're right there. Three points, let's uh, keep this going. But again, it's hard to do that with the running game being so withered down, with your offensive lineman being out and you not being able to fully run the ball is one thing, but also use play action. Now Steve Spagnolo is blitzing Derek Carr every other play and, and whatnot. So it's hard really to gain any momentum from that point. It's too it's too spotty to beat the Chiefs, if that makes sense, especially when they get performances like this. And then Kansas City led at halftime with a 16-7 score. And um, then after a few chances, they had to take the lead. You know, they missed a couple. Uh, they missed a field goal and an interception at the goal line by Kalen Saunders by the New Orleans Saints that kind of gave them a little bit of hope. But... Um, you know, after that, Foster Moreau scored a touchdown, and then you're back to three points. So again, you're right there. But it always felt like, I don't know if it was just me, I never really felt too concerned about the Saints maybe being the Chiefs. You know, they got close, but you always got to get a feel for it. I feel like you could always tell when a team's really serious about coming back or whatnot. And I was never really worried. I don't know if the Chiefs ever felt worried. Um, they just gave up a lot of big plays on defense as well and uh you know the Chiefs did a good job of responding with another touchdown after that Foster Moreau touchdown to uh to Xavier Worthy to pretty much end it after that because the Saints went four and out twice and that was pretty much the ball game so um you know after the game thinking about both of these teams while Kansas City won you know they were two and seven in the red zone and the protection for Mahomes at least on the outsides, you know, the tackle position looks a little bit questionable. So that's something that obviously they're going to have to get better at going forward. But really the main takeaway from this was that the uh, they were able to take advantage of an injured group with the Saints through the big plays by Juju Smith-Schuster and Patrick Mahomes had a great day on the ground running it as well. 
Um, they just find ways to win. And with the Saints, you know, you talk about that interception that Derek, or from Derek Carr and uh, the injuries. You know, it's, it's not a great recipe to try and beat the Chiefs. That always feels like they know exactly what to do in the big moments. So it was always going to be an uphill battle. But uh, looking at the Saints now, talking about them going forward, the question is how concerning is this, right? Because they started off so hot. And now you lose three in a row. And Derek Carr is reportedly set to miss a couple of weeks now with that oblique injury. So, you know, what is this Saints team going to be now? Um, After such a promising start, your quarterback's not going to be there. What does this mean for Devontae Adams? Is he going to want to be there if Derek Carr's not there? Um, All of these things where it seems like the Saints were, you know, getting to a place where they could have competed this year. Now it all seems like in a matter of weeks, it has all just crumbled down. And, uh... You know, they do have a lot of injuries, but, um, you know, after losing three straight now that they have to host Tampa Bay on Sunday, now they're already um, owing, the Saints are owing two, no, they're owing one um, in the division already, or excuse me, they're one and one because they beat the Panthers and lost to the Falcons, so um, these next divisional games are going to be important now without Derek Carr, you know, what is this team going to be before or after when Derek Carr comes back, right? Are they going to be close to 500? Or are they just going to continue losing? It's a, it's a dangerous spot where the Chiefs are standing right now. Um, the Saints need this upcoming win more than the Buccaneers do, I believe. But I don't know if it's attainable now with Derek Carr being injured. So the Saints right now, if I were to put it on a 1-10 to 10 scale... I would probably say like around a 6 or a 7 if I'm a Saints fan because, you know, no quarterback now, divisional game, you don't want to drop to 1 and 2. And, um, you know, from that point on, I don't know exactly what the rest of their schedule is, but um, you don't know when Derek Carr's coming back. So how does that dictate everything you try to do? It's uh, it's not a great place to be for the Saints as much as, um, you know, they look good at the start, they have good players, but a lot of unfortunate turns of events right now for them to uh to kind of feel better than I think a six or a seven on a worry scale right so that's just me but speaking of bad scenarios for teams I don't think it can get much worse than the New York Jets we're going to get into the firing of Robert Sala now after this upcoming break why did they do it my thoughts on it and you know what can we expect now from the Jets moving forward all of that coming up right after this break we'll be right back (laughs) 